So as we continue to play with Atmel Studio's debugging cap capabilities and features, we're going to continue from debugging too. And now we're going to change the clock frequency to 10 megahertz. The reason we're going to do this is to have a look at the configuration change protection registers so that we understand how to use those properly. So there we will use some of the IO view features and we're also going to add some functionality to save data to EEPROM so that we can explore and have a look at some of the memory views. Finishing off with the watch window and how to cast a pointer to array so that we can view it. So let's start off by changing the clock frequency to 10 megahertz. So if I look at the I.O. view, CLK, and if I start debugging, I can read the current state and we can see that we are at a 20 megahertz internal oscillator and that by default our prescaler is six times so it's 3.3 megahertz. So what we want to do is change this prescaler. So if we F1 on the main co controller B we can see that there's a prescaler enable in the prescaler divisor. So PDIV is what we need to write to. So we need to go to clock prescale enable. So we also need to write to PDIV. So as we learned in the programming references section, Alt G, open the device header file and just type PDIV. And here we can find the numerator and we wanted a divisor of two. We all these two together and read modify write and let's see if this has been successful. So here we can see the prescaler is six and as we step over it has not changed and you can see that nothing has changed here either. So the reason is as we have a look at the data sheet that this is a configuration change protection register so there's a special function to use in order to change these registers and these functions are underscore protected write this function you can see takes in a register and then the value we want to write this register to so this is simply the register and the value is what we worked out just now and let's see if this works now. And stepping over, now you can see that the prescaler divisor has changed and we have a prescaler divisor of two. Okay, so in part two now, what we're going to do is we're going to try write some basic functions to access the EEPROM. As we do before, look in AVR libc and search for EEPROM. Here we can see a list of functions available to us and also that the include is AVR EEPROM. So what we wanted to do was use one of these functions. Let's just use write block. And if I have a function, which I'm just going to use this as a reference here, I can go also go F1, get the function specific documentation here. So all this is doing is copying from a source to a destination of a certain size. So I'm going to use this function. The source is from an array and we've got a hello world. And we could write that from the source which is hello to, and let's just give it a void pointer to zero, which is basically going to be the start of EEPROM. And we can use the size of hello. And let's write one more time.
now looking for the memory view and the memory one view is what we wanted and we can see set it to different types of memories such as fuses or what we're looking at is the EEPROM so I'm going to run to the first EEPROM right and stepping over you can see that it writes to hello world and it automatically updates and stepping twice more we have now written the second line so what we'd like to do now is actually just write a little function which can save something that we want to write to EEPROM so this line which repeats we're gonna create a little function to write to EEPROM and go to save Now we can replace the EEPROM write calls with calls to the save function. And here we can see we are writing as before, hello world, and AVR says hi. Now the reason we created this new function is we wanted to show you Studio cannot understand properly the value of what's happening of this variable to save. Although if we do click on high, for instance, here we can see exactly what that is set to as is hello, but Studio can't evaluate uh, save yet. So the way that we can do this, here we can dereference a pointer to look at the contents of memory and, and cast to an array. and now if we run to our breakpoint you can see that the contents of to save are known up to the certain point so what we tried to do here is to show you how to cast a pointer to a different data type so that it's more readable in the watch window